Uh, dog food is really fun and exciting. Dog food for me is, I look at it as the fun stuff. It's the opportunity for us to take our products to the next level through the development cycle, but actually try them in uh, real life situations. We're always getting to, to do new things. We're going to be you know, the first ones to light something up, the first, one, the first ones out there in space and get to plant our flag and say like, yep, I did that one. You know, we're the first ones here, we're the first ones to see these features lit up, we're the first ones to, to make this better, we're the first ones to see it. Uh, and, that's, and that's really exciting. There are a class or a type of bug that can only be found in production, right? Um, there is a set of test cases that can be run against a product, but until you actually run it live, run it um, in the real world, run it against real users that do, frankly, crazy things against their, their mailboxes into our system is really um, the only opportunity that you can to uh, expose, I think, that level or that class of bug. It usually involves with a large group of people coming together to do the initial investigation, and uh, we learn a lot from, from being able to investigate those issues. We take what the um, component owners, for example, want deployed, what the release management um, schedule is, and um, then we also take into account what MSIT wants in terms of their requirements, um, you know, their feedback on end user tolerance, uh, and, and we build a plan. We actually have a lot of uh, release criteria around uh, the dog food builds running in these various environments for a certain amount of time and without issues before they move on to the next stage. We're always going to see the best results and have, um, I guess, the least amount of user impact if we can deploy to, say, a very small subset of users to start with and have the ability to gradually scale up that deployment. So even start with five to ten users on a single server and then, you know, eventually get to a point where we're scaling up to 100,000 mailboxes. The exchange team does their own dog fooding, so we so we'll do we have our own dog food environment. So the code will land here first, and then uh, after it's been running in our environment for a while, then it gets to go to uh, Microsoft's uh, Exchange dog food environment. And once it's uh, been running there, you know, with thousands of users, you know, upwards of five thousand users, um, then it will go to a uh, corporate pilot environment. And then once that looks good, then they can they'll spread it more more around worldwide. It's not the pristine lab environment people think. This is a uh, we're laying it on top of our real corporate you know, infrastructure, which is just as much a challenge as our customers. When the builds roll out into dog food, um, you know, it's the first time that we're, we really get to see it, uh, the new bits integrated with all the other features, all our other partners around Microsoft. You know, Exchange is a large, complex product, and we integrate with things like, you know, Windows and, and our other partners like SharePoint and Office and Outlook and uh, Link. And uh, so all those things kind of come together for the first, for really for the, for the first time in a real user environment uh, in dog food. Our customers often ask us, what it was your experience deploying litigation hold? What was your experience deploying archive mailbox? What was your experience deploying MRM? Things like this. And if, if we haven't done it, if we don't understand what the, um, like even the server administration perspective looks like, what the, um, the end user experience looks like, what's, what the support path looks like, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't yield much confidence for the customer. So, so I would say the real life scenario validation, the end to end um, very scenario validation is, is, um, is what you know, we can provide on top of all of the bug fixes. It's not just a uh, dog environment for, you know, for our bits or for our new features, it's also for us to learn a process on how to run, how to run it, these things and then especially in the service we, we, learn, we learn how to run these things at scale. We always say Microsoft the first and best customer. One of the nice things too about dog food is that uh, the kind of people with dog food are pretty passionate. You know, they, they you know they're doing it for a good reason. The uh, thing I like most about being on the exchange team in terms of dog fooding, now that it's part of the office division and 
I, I have a legitimate reason. It's not more just my passion for it. It's actually, I need to help in these areas. And it is cross product, cross platform. Um, it does touch so many different people that there's now a legitimate business need for me to be on dog food. What, could I, what more could I ask for? It's almost like a bonus that I get for working at Microsoft in the exchange team. Dog food is a very uh, integral part of our whole release process. For me to be able to you know, take my experience as a, um, you know, I've done everything from server support to client support to program management, um, to take my experience and um, provide it to, you know, the people who write the code and write the specs. It's just, um, I, I think it's amazing, right? Um, and, you know, to be one of the first mailboxes always that gets to be on the latest and greatest platform, like my own mailbox in the dog food forest, I love it. And, you know, it drives me. And I, I love having the opportunity to make the product better.